Uh, well, Graham, you and your players have been in the spotlight since Tuesday, but now it's back to business. And staff, um, yeah, yeah, we've we've um, we've enjoyed the week. It's it's been busy, 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 and uh, lads, uh, we trained Wednesday morning. Um, we had an early session Wednesday morning before we depart uh, the hotel, so we've got a good session under us, those that, that needed it, and the rest on a warm down. And we had totally off, and we're back at it this morning. So um, yeah, it's 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 busy, busy, busy. But what's different is you've walked in and there are fans queuing for tickets. Yeah, I can't believe it. There was fans outside since four o'clock this morning. They're out there with their, their teas and their coffees, well wrapped up. Um, obviously, Joe came over yesterday to, to Rodney, and he just couldn't get in the gate. It was just chaos. It was it was brilliant. It was great to see, to be fair. And the good thing is, you're up at four o'clock in the morning queuing. They're not moaning and complaining. They're actually smiling and happy, and there's a buzz about them. So, yeah, it's great to see. Great to see. And uh, listen, long overdue at this football club. And it's going to be the same again next week, isn't it? Yeah, next week it'll, it'll, it'll be the same. So the, the next couple of weeks, there's some big games, there's some real big games coming up, some tasty fixtures. Um, and when you're a professional footballer, that's what you live for, that's what you train for, that's what you work towards. So yeah, the lads are really, really looking forward to it. But like I said to them, let's take one game at a time. And um, we've got a massive game on Saturday tomorrow against Wrexham, which we would like to uh, we like to correct. I don't think we gave the best version of ourselves at Wrexham away. And I think we made uh, two basic silly errors which uh, which cost us the game so uh, we need to be aware of that and we need to give probably a better version of ourselves tomorrow in order to get anything out of the game is it almost the perfect game given what you've got next week to take the players minds off manchester you know, I, I'm, you know i don't even need to ask you really <clears throat> do you say to the players forget united you've got a game ahead but it's not just any game, this is a Welsh tussle. Well, look, look we've, we've all been players, we all know the script. You don't play well tomorrow, you, you, you don't give yourself a great opportunity to play next week. So it, it doesn't really matter um, about, and I, I've always said this, and this is with all due respect to, to, uh, to, to tomorrow's opponents. It's about us, it's about what we do, it's about how we prepare, it's about how we go about our business, and it's about the performance levels. And um, look, if you don't perform tomorrow, if you don't go about your business well, you, you, you give yourself a little bit of a, a little bit of a headache all next week going into a fixture. So the next game, so irrespective of who the next game is, as a player, you want to perform well in every game. You want to do your best, and you want to win every football match you take part in. And I don't see that changing, irrespective of uh, of opponents. You want to win, and footballers should have that mindset and that mentality of wanting to win. Um, even in training, I was I was built like that myself. I had to win in training. I had to win because I felt if I went if I went Monday to Friday, winning Monday to Friday in training, I felt in the right mindset and the right place to uh, to compete on a Saturday. So, air lads will be competitive tomorrow. Air lads will be competing tomorrow. Air lads will be giving their all tomorrow, and they won't have half an eye on on, on anything other than uh, than than Wrexham. Rest assured. Yeah, and you know Wrexham are not Manchester United, but. In terms of League Two, they're the Hollywood club, aren't they? Well, look, that goes. That's that's probably because of of, of uh, the ownership and things like that. And like I say, that's that's a great story. They've had a great journey. It's good people, well-run club, a um, lot, lot of good players at the club, top management. So yeah, it's a combination. Um, it's okay being well-run and having having rich and famous owners. But um, you've got to have the proper people in the in the proper jobs in the proper seats. Um, to, to, to make the club function and obviously Phil and his staff and his players are making the club function so uh, brilliant job all around, well done to them. Oh, you know they, they've got big firepower haven't they, you found that out second half at the race course but since then you've, you've put a run together. Yeah we have, we're, we're, we're probably going in a little bit more confident than we did previously, we're going in probably in better form than we did previously um, yeah, the firepower, air issues this season, my issues this season has been I can't affect the game, I couldn't affect the game off the bench really as, as, as we would have liking. At stages this season we've had three and four substitutions, so um, our bench hasn't really had the impact this season that, a, that a, a normal bench should do. And that's purely and simply down to numbers, that's purely and simply down to injuries. 
Um, so hopefully now that's behind us and we can maybe start to, uh, to impact off the bench. Just like we've done last week at Doncaster, I think that was the first time I can recall this season that our, our bench has come off, um, have, have come off the bench and actually won the game for us and had that massive uh, positive impact. So hopefully now we can start maybe resting one or two, putting one or two on. We can be strong coming off the bench. We can have choices and we can uh, we can maybe start picking up points from our bench as well as on the pitch. Yeah. Um... And is it still softly, softly with Adam Lewis as it goes? Yeah, look, that's that's a long process. <coughs> He's, uh, I, I was never going to be able to just chuck him in um, uh, for 90 minutes. It's 45 back to back. Tuesday was a big ask, back to back, but I felt we had to do it. Um, I've got the comfort of a, an 11 by 11 in-house game next week, which is for one or two lads on the way back as well. So I have the comfort of that, so I can use that as well as Saturday. So how we approach him, we'll see how he is this morning. We'll sit down with him, we'll sit down with the medical staff from the SNC department, and we'll just generally see where he is, and we'll make the best decision um, for the Adam and for the football team. I know Matt Baker, you suggested. Um, any other worries after Tuesday? Um, Matt has made a little bit of progress. He's trained on Wednesday, but again, we've not been on grass, so uh, today will be our first day on grass. So Matt has made a little bit of progress. Whether that's quick enough or not, I don't know. Um, you know, again, if he's carrying any knocks, uh, we all know Matty Baker, he's going to say, we're, we're one leg, yeah, I'm fit, I'm grand, he'll run through brick walls. So it's pointless asking the player because I know what he's going to say to me now, injured or not. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to have a little look at him. If it's not um, this Saturday, it'll, it'll definitely be next Saturday because it's not a long, long term injury. So, touch wood, that's, that's a good bit of news because uh, normally this season they have been long term injuries. And uh, news on signings? Are we still in January? Yeah, she is. Um, active, we are trying. Um, again, I've lost a couple of players to the higher division, which is probably frustrating. Yeah, it happened to us last year as well, but it, it, we are in the right place. We are fishing in the right uh, pond. So, yeah, it's frustrating when your players go and uh, go and. Um, we lose and one of them actually scored on Monday night, to be fair. First game, first touch of the ball, he scores. Um, which was, uh, look, that, uh, it'll prove that we are probably aiming at high and we are in the right place. So, yeah, I think it's patience. I mentioned patience earlier on in the window. I think it's patience, but I do think we'll have a little bit of positivity over the next, uh, the next few days. Obviously not ready for tomorrow. Um, but hopefully, come Monday, Tuesday, we'll have uh, we'll have one or two little outcomes of uh, of a long a long chase. And just finally, this is such a big period for the club now, isn't it? Take over, sort of imminent, but actually, what you've created after winning at Eastleigh is the club ready for it? And how are you looking on the next few weeks now? Ah, look, the club, the club is ready. The club, you've got some great people, Gareth Evans in, in the background, and obviously Louis, our media manager. They, they'll be chaotic, you know, with the the staff we've got in the background. They've they've been brilliant, and it's just reward because there's a lot of people in the background of this football club that have worked their socks off and kept this club going, and the players included, the fans included. Um, we've been through a tough time. We've been through a tough period over the last uh, 12, 15, 18 months. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it was touch and go at times as well, but they've worked their socks off and I'm delighted for them and I'm delighted and I'm, these, these moments are about them, these moments are about the staff, are about the players, the people in the background. Uh, little Olivia who walked around the ground at the start of the season as well, who, who done laps to collect, uh, to collect some, some funding for the team, for the club. It's about the supporters who dug deep and kept us going. So these are moments for them, these are moments that they deserve and, and, and I hope they cherish. Um, because they fully deserve, because the support they've given me. I've come through the front door and we've gone through some, some tough times. And you know, and I have to be honest, I walked through the front door and I didn't, I didn't see a relegation team. I didn't see or smell it around the place. The supporters, they got behind me from day one. They bought into everything we wanted to do. And that's why these moments are for them. And that's why this is a special club backed by special supporters and, and special staff. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great feeling to be able to give back to them. It's a great feeling to be able to put on these games and, and, and these occasions for them because they deserve them. But now the better feeling for me personally and for the players would be able to reward them with wins 
and with success and, and with progress. So they're the key uh, battles ahead for us as staff and us as players. Um, on the transfer front, you, you said you've had inquiries. I'd imagine none of your players will want to go now. They've got Man United on the, on the right. <coughs> on the, they'll certainly not want to go entertain any moves. Which is none of my players were going anyway. Yeah. None of them were going anyway. Uh, we don't have the squad, as you, as you probably know. Uh, we don't have the squad to be letting letting players out. Um, so, and even if one or two, there was one or two um, obviously suitors for our players, um, we've, we've, we've torn, we've put the phone down on a number of a number of people asking and inquiring. So there was no one going in anyway. So uh, I don't think the Rex and the Man United, the Swindon, I don't think them games um, and the buzz about the place, I don't think that's going to change uh, their minds. Well, certainly not my mind and the, the, the new owners' minds and the directors' minds. They weren't going in anyway. We, we had said no. And how, how pleased are you with the post Wrexham uh, response from the players? Because it was a you, you were understandably down after the game, but they've they've come strong since. since they have, the they have, and, and and that might be that might be learning. That might be something to do with the the, the, the squad. With one or two players come back from injury, you know, we were without Aaron Wilde, we were without Harry Charlesley. Um, we were out Matt Baker for a period this season as well. Um, James Clark was out, so said Parma Holden. She could go through the whole squad, really. Yeah, you could. Uh, we, we were out without some big, big players, and like I say, when you have a squad of ours, uh, the size of ours, um, you can't really be without your, uh, your your top players, your top performers. And uh, there was lads there in that squad that had to keep us going, uh, and they they tried their best. Um, it was it was tough for them as well because one or two one or two need the senior lads around them one or two needs that that the better players around them as well so yeah it was it was a tough period Wrexham was a tough game uh, we let ourselves down I believe at Wrexham with a couple of silly basic errors but after that yeah we had a real we always have a debrief we always have a chat. Uh, I'm not the best when I don't win, to be quite honest with you. And the players, I think the players know that and understand that now and, and realise that. But um, a lot of credit has to go to the lads because they could have easily went under. They could have easily disappeared. And, you know, it's not easy when you're getting beat up. It's not easy when you're looking over your shoulder and you can't make changes when you've got probably eight, nine, ten of your fifth players on the pitch and one or two players on the pitch are carrying knocks and shouldn't be on the pitch. You've, you've, you've got a bench for uh, three or four uh, academy players and things like that. It's, it really it is a tough, it was a tough period for us. It was a tough period for the football club. And that's why I say full credit to them. They stuck with us, they stuck with me and, and, and they, uh, we come through the other end. Now to tell us we're, we're, we're 12, 13 points is, I don't know, clear of relegation, um, or clear of that end of the table. Um, in January, after 27 games, to tell us we're maybe six points short of, of maybe top 10 or top 12, or whatever it is, in January, I think it's it's a remarkable uh, it's a remarkable achievement by this group of players. Back to back wins away at Doncaster last week. You're trying to compete with clubs who are just blowing you out of water when it comes to signing players, when it comes to squad size, finances, depth. You know, it just it, it really is it really is testament to the group and testament to every other football club that we, we, we are still competitive and we're getting stronger as, as the weeks and the months are going on. You're, you're competitive beasts though and even though they've got credit in the bank, the players, you'll be telling them, look, you don't be, if you don't perform against Wrexham, you can forget about, is that still a threat or do they have credit in the bank? Uh, look, there's a, there's a living crisis out there. Credit in the bank soon, uh, soon runs dry. So uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's not give them too much credit and too much praise because that can all. We know football. We know football at this level. We know league two. That can all change overnight. So as soon as you take your eye off the ball, as soon as you take uh, lose your concentration or your focus, um, all that credit in the bank soon disappears. So um, yeah, they uh, they best not because uh, I, I won't have it. And, and I think they know that. And I don't think the lads in the dressing room will have it either. There's some senior pros in there who drive the football club, who drive the dressing room. And I think as a collective, um, I don't think we will have people losing focus, coming off it, or getting ahead of themselves. That's when you get punished. That's when you get hurt. Um, and I don't see that happening at that and in this changing room, to be honest. And, and it was in Wrexham. It was very much, you know, ridiculous wind and all that. But they, they almost it was the physicality, wasn't it? That you know, backs come in. They've got other threats as well. I know, but it's 
that's that's what they bring as well. Well, Wrexham in 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 a few ways, Wrexham remind me of um, my own team in 2002 at Plymouth in League Two, um, where we won this division. Um, and we we were, I think Jurgen Klopp uses the expression the mentality monsters. Wrexham are probably similar. Wrexham have, have have got good quality players. They can score from various different ways. They're very very strong at set pieces. And at times they can win where they don't have to be pretty. They can also win by being pretty. And um, so yeah, Wrexham have got a lot of a lot of uh, in their armory. They've got a lot of, of things in their armory. So they are a decent team. And um, let's not take out and away from it. Any team up the top of the table are a decent team. And um, but the, the the variation in their goals, the variation in the play, the variation of of of, of the players off the bench and the strength and depth and things like that. It's really strong, and yeah, they do. They certainly remind me um, of of the Plymouth team I played in in 2002 in this division. Um, it, it was a really strong team, full of strong characters, um, led by a great manager. And, and I, I think Wrexham are very, very similar to uh, to that Plymouth team I played in. Um, just on Kyle, he, he was on the bench. Presumably, that would have been too soon. But he was. Was that just to work him back towards? Where, where he wants to be. Um, yeah, we wouldn't have been able to put Coyle on the pitch. We had we had nine uh, we had nine spaces. Now I think on the bench. No, I think if I'm not wrong, uh, Harrison Bright and Nelson Sanke uh, were on the bench as well. Nine spaces. So the two young lads probably would have got on ahead of ahead of Coyle had we had needed. Um, we've brought Coyle with us uh, just to be part of the group, just to integrate uh, back back part of the group. The games uh, last Saturday, the game. Um, on Tuesday night and the game tomorrow are too soon for him. Uh, like I say, I'm going to try and integrate him in a, in, a, in a game, try and get him 20 minutes or a half an hour in a game on uh, on Monday or Tuesday in an 11v11 in-house game. So that will be as good as we can get for Kyle. But yeah, just to give him a little feel of back in around the squad, he's uh, he's got a voice, he's got leadership qualities as well, Kyle. So there was a lot of uh, positives in doing that. He was able to work with us on Wednesday morning as well. Mm -hmm in around with the group and um, he was able to work on the pitch um, at Doncaster as well. He was able to work on Tuesday night with the with the lads with a little bit of running after the game and things like that. So yeah, we've got a good bank of work into him um, over over the last week. So hopefully we can keep building him. And uh, fingers crossed within the next week, two weeks he will be uh, he'll be he'll be up to speed and, and available and we can then realistically take him off the bench and get him some action. And Oz, will, he, will that 11 v 11, is that too soon for him? Or, or That's the big it, question. That's the big question. Oz, <coughs> Oz is needing three to four weeks of uh, contact, of contact training, of football training on the grass. So um, how we get that into him, given our schedule, is a little bit more difficult. Um, he has gone away and done a session with the U team as well, just so he can build up uh, and get another grass session under his belt. Um, he'll join in with us today um, again on a Friday morning. So um, it's touch and go whether I can put him in on Tuesday in the uh, 11 v 11, the in-house game. I'll have to sit with the, the medical experts. I'll be twisting their arm and I'll be twisting their arm, but uh, Sophie and Scott are quite strong. And uh, again, like I said, they'll probably look longer term whereas myself and Oz will be, I'll be fine go on short term but yeah if we can get him in and some sort of a game um, in, in the in-house game next week we can, we, we, we'll do that but he's uh, you're probably looking at Oz probably mid-February by the time he's he's, uh, he's up to speed and he's, he's ready to to be integrated or he's even ready for uh, for selection and uh, for a place in the squad. It's been a year you don't want to rush the final steps. So well it's, yeah, yeah but, it's uh, it's been a long yeah, long yeah. process for him. It's been tough as well and mm -hmm. um, he's he's picked up a few injuries since he's been at the club so mm -hmm. it has been tough for him, yeah. Um, finally, can ask, um Joe was the one in the dugout on Tuesday night. I, I, I couldn't see were you were you top of the side or were you behind him? I sat in the stand. Uh, yeah, I sat just good, behind good him. Luck. Yeah, I uh, sat in the stand just behind him. I was just above him. Um, probably a better view as well to be to be fair and uh, I probably there was enough pressure on the players. The players didn't me, they, me stood in the dugout and in front of them and uh, putting pressure on them. So, like I said the other night, there was an immense amount of pressure on both sets of fan, uh, players. So, uh, the lads actually done well. So I might sit in the stand again tomorrow because uh, they just looked as if they played without pressure.
There's no, no space if you need to sit in the sun. Well, yeah, yeah, I won't get a That's seat. That's to bring your own I'll have to go in one of the houses across the way, or even the Mercura looking out the top window. But yeah, the lads played well the other yeah. night without me being, uh, being in the faces. So it was just probably, yeah. okay, alleviate a little bit of pressure from them as well, whether that worked or not, I don't know. Yeah, so good.